hope you enjoy my dad's videos. Make sure to share this video with your family and friends. Like and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you get notified for all my dad's new videos. My social media will be tagged down below so you can follow it. And just remember, Jesus loves you. Hi guys, uh, just to let you know, we've got a new, brand new website, uh, drcharlieward.com, where all our videos will be loaded over the next few weeks. And you'll be able to view all of those um, without, there's no charge for watching any of those. We've moved them all onto our own platform because all the doctor ones, which are very, very important, um, have been taken down. But it's, so we've now got control over those, but every single video we post will be free to watch. That's very important for you to know. The other thing is, is we're getting a lot of, an awful lot of people asking us about gold and silver. And I've always been an advocate of gold and silver. And um, myself, I'm not in a position to give financial advice. I'm not qualified to do so. I'm just going to tell you what I've personally done. I've personally bought gold and silver, and I've used a company that uh, I trust, um, which is shown below here. Um, they've always looked after me well. And if you order from them uh, more than £250 worth, um, you get a free one ounce silver coin, which is very, very nice. It's a nice little, nice little gift. But uh, this is not an endorsement. This is just what I have done personally. And it's up to you. It's your choice. As I said, I'm not qualified to give the advice uh, on financial advice, but it's just what I have done personally. And I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy watching all of my videos. Thank you. Good morning. Pleasure. How are Good to you? See you, Charlie? You too. I've missed you. I know. I've missed you too. I have to tell you, we just got back from DC and it was an extraction process. And I mean that in every sense of the word. We had to get extracted out of there. Crazy what happened on January 20th. Incredible. Really crazy. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if you knew the fact that I had the inauguration 10 hours before you uh, before it went out live. I watched your broadcast with Nino, with David Dino yeah. Rodriguez, uh, the other night, and I was shocked to hear that. How did you come across that? Um, it was shared with me from somebody on the inside. And uh, when I shared it across to my friends in America, um, some of which you, who you know, they were shocked as well that they'd seen it before it happened. And uh, <laughs> but there was a, there was so there's been so many things that have happened in the last few days that are, are brutally obvious to anybody that's just done a bit of research you know even when you see today we had the pictures coming out of the uh the oval office that happens to be uh they've moved it to um to los angeles i think into or into into california somewhere into a studio and of course somebody picked up on the fact that if you look out the windows of the oval office there's a car park outside that's never been there before. <laughs> I know. Um, and then you see that he's signed 17, by the way, 17 executive orders, mm -hmm. none of which have been registered. And right. he, signed them all with, he, he suddenly started writing with his left hand instead of his right hand. Um, you couldn't make it up. It's just like there's so many signs out there. For those people that are awake, it's funny. For those people that are asleep, they go, oh, what's wrong with that? Yeah, exactly. So let me let me rewind the clock and set the stage because uh, producer Liz and I went to D.C. on January 3rd. Actually, she got there the third. I got there the fourth. Yeah. And we, we were staying in a VRBO. Nice unit uh, close to the action. I don't want to give away locations, but very close to the action within a few blocks. And uh, I was in touch with Juan Savin when I was there. I was talking to Scott McKay while I was there. And, um, you know, Juan and I did about a walk and talk around DC for two or three hours one day. But uh, what I found very interesting was initially when we got there, uh, the National Guard uh, wasn't, wasn't there. They were starting to arrive. And when they did arrive, they were boys unarmed, never saw any arms, no sidearms, nothing. About, uh, let's see, a week before Wednesday, I believe it was, all of a sudden the boys I woke up became men. And they were big men, older men, and they were carrying big weapons. And there was a lot more of them. And I thought to myself, well, this is interesting because, of course, it all changed after January 6th. And that was the narrative that was being pushed. So I every day did a big walkabout around the entire perimeter, which every day the perimeter got farther and further away from the Capitol. They increased the perimeter. And we would talk to the National Guard, bring them coffee, what have you. I would talk to the Capitol Police. And while the Capitol Police and the National Guard would tell you the Capitol Police have jurisdiction, when it came to who was in charge of the National Guard, 
they both said, well, ma'am, that's kind of a gray area. And I thought, well, that's strange. You don't know who your chain of command is, or you're just not going to say. So uh, several times we asked them, you know, who do you work for? And they all said the National Guard, we took an oath, you know, to uphold the Constitution. Well, if you read into that, that means they know they're to protect us, right? That's their job, protect us. But the only time I had one encounter with the National Guard that was pseudo unpleasant was the day, let's see, I believe it was on Monday before the inauguration. No, pardon me, Friday before the inauguration. We were standing outside. We came across a bunch of NBC people trying to get their press credentials to go into the fenced area. And remember Kirsten Welder, who's the lady who was one of the uh, people who did the uh, debate. She was rather nasty. She got locked out, couldn't, couldn't get a credential. And I'd been talking with some of the other people there. And of course I don't work for NBC, but we were just loitering, trying to take in what we could. So we followed her. She finally caught on to the fact we were following her because I was trying to catch up with her to ask her what happened. Why did she? So finally uh, producer Liz, God love her, just zeroed in on her. Kristen Wilter turns around, comes at us and starts to come like, who are you? Who are you? We're like, well, who are you? She said, I'm Kirsten with NBC. We're like, oh, okay. You didn't get your credentials. So there was just adversarial sort of stuff going on. And later on that morning, as walking back, I fire up a Facebook live and the national guard behind the fence comes storming at me and he yells, are you media? And I said, I'm private media, independent journalism. And he turned around and walked away. Other than that, everything else was copacetic and the DC was quiet as a mouse. There was nobody there. I mean, nobody. Restaurants closed, no visitors, streets empty, nothing, nothing. Was with Katie Hopkins went for a couple of days. That was fun. Saw one of your mates from across the pond. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's an amazing time, isn't it? And when you're alert to what's going on and you're seeing everything, it just, it makes sense. And I, yes, on the 20th, my phone rang off the hook and the people were going mad. And I said, look, you have to understand that the crime has to be, if, 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 if you told everyone he was going to do this, and he didn't do it, then you they, they would you would always leave that door open. Well, he didn't do it, did he? He just threatened. No, he's actually committed the crime now and tried to steal the election, which the evidence is all there. Most people didn't think he'd be arrogant enough to do it. Well, we know that if we wind back, we've been told that this is all pantomime. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves that the battle is already won. And this pantomime is to wake people up. And there's a number of holes in the pantomime right now, which should wake people up. And there's certain things you think to yourself, well, how much have they actually got to do to wake people up? You know, has has Biden got to issue an executive order allowing 80 year old man to have sex with 14 year old women? Has it got to go that far before you wake up? I hope not. Exactly. I mean, they've. They've already started in D.C. the age of consent for vaccines at 11. They're using that language in Washington, D.C. Age of consent. Yeah, I think, you know, that to me sounds like you're setting the table for the age of consent for whatever else they want to now push forward. You know, their agenda is progressive, right? But this is all to provoke people to go, are you for real? Are you crazy? But people aren't going, no, that makes sense. That does that make sense? Because what yeah. what's happened with the world is the world has completely gone nuts in the mm-hmm. fact that if, if I can have a vaccine, then I can get back to normal. No, that's not true. If you have a vaccine, number one, you're going to need another vaccine every single year for the next couple of years until you're dead. And it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. Um, and you'll have to keep uh, keep wearing your mask. And you'll have to keep six feet away from any everybody. And you won't be able to fly. And you won't be able to do this. Uh, but they're not, you know, people are, just give me the vaccine. I'll get on with my life. It doesn't work like that. I know people who've said, oh, I'm going to have the vaccine, gone down have the vaccine. They're still wearing their mask. They're still keeping six foot away from everybody. Um, what was the point of having your vaccine? Right. And we're already seeing the vaccine. People are still getting coronavirus. So apparently Correct. it's not it's not bulletproof, whatever it is. Whatever they're doing is not necessarily working. And people have died. I don't know how many millions of doses have been administered versus how many deaths there have been, but we're definitely getting reports of people dying, which that happens. And again, you know, they may or may not blame it on the vaccine. They may say, oh, he had heart disease or, oh, he was obese or, oh, he had liver failure, you know, whatever. 
uh, funny how they'll use the comorbidities when it comes to an adverse event on a vaccine. But if it's yeah. if it's a, a comorbidity that's the cause of death, they'll call it COVID. COVID-19. Exactly. <laughs> Decapitation. Right. He died of COVID. He decapitated himself. COVID. <laughs> exactly. Really nuts. Well, we've, so we've, I ha- go on. I, I, I want to ask you this because I was the reason I was just a couple minutes late to our, our call, and I apologize, was I was on the phone with a longtime friend of my father's who's one of the world's foremost leading experts in, on the U.S. Constitution, and he's quite published. He's written several, uh, he has a lot of publications. I couldn't even enumerate them all. He's sending me something. But, you know, one of the pieces, the hallmark of this whole uh, you know, what, what we see unfolding is that we've all been fairly dependent on a couple of things. One, that the Insurrection Act was signed. And the, to me, I did not know definitively if we had to have it public or not, right? The signature had to be public or not. What is your understanding of that? Is it a, a public facing thing or can it be done without the public knowing? Um, I was told that it was signed. Mm-hmm. And it's very, very clear to me that we're in, we're in a war. Right. We're in a third world war. Uh, whether you go out and post your position in a war, I doubt. And I think with the same with this, the one thing that has become very, very clear, Insurrection Act or not, the USA is currently under military control. Yes, um, I agree. And the corporation was, uh, was, was finished 18 months, two years ago. It was shut down. And it's very much like... Um, electing a, a chairman to a board of a company that doesn't exist. Right. Um, so that's that's why I don't see any value in, in the Biden thing. If you understand that the corporation has been shut down, um, we're in a transition right now from the old corporation to a new republic. So the, 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 the pantomime of making out that Biden's the, the, the president is complete pantomime because the US is not under any president right now. It's under military control. And you've got the two, the two military leaders, what, the one from FEMA and the other one from the, the uh, Marines, who's in charge of everything. And they're the people that are running America right now. Um, and it's very, very clear for those people who, who know what they're talking about, that those two guys are also in contact for some reason with Donald Trump. Even though Donald Trump isn't the president at this moment in time, nobody is. But it seems so, very much like that they're they're liaising with him. Okay, so that's a very encouraging aspect to hear. I had not heard that they were actually in contact with President Trump because the gentleman I was just speaking to um, had said that it you know it's impossible for Congress to transfer power of the government to a foreign entity. In other words you cannot transfer the act of 1871 is an illegal act. You cannot create a foreign entity and say, okay, we're giving the power of the federal government to this entity. So, so are you, you are in agreement with that statement then? 100%. So so what you're saying is every president from 1871 to today has been an illegal, like we've just been running an illegal operation. Like we weren't even a legitimate country. No, you weren't. It's all been a complete mishmash. Um, if you, and if you want to look at the funny side of it, it's very interesting. It's called the White House in a swamp that's in the District of Columbia. Very interesting to have a White House coming out of Columbia, isn't it, really? <laughs> Big, biggest drug dealers in the world, the CIA. Right. Um, so, yes. It's, and that's exactly what this gentleman said. He goes, that whole narrative of a corporation being transferred from Congress into a, you know, creating this whole entity. In other words, Congress saying, yep, we're going to give the power of the federal government to some entity and, and uh, give it away is a CIA PSYOP. He said that's a complete completely, fabrication. Completely. And what Donald Trump is currently doing is creating a new system for the republic, for a republic, the United States of America as a republic. And I've, I've chosen to call it Nasara, but whether it's okay. called Nasara or not, I don't know, but that will be the fundamental principles of the new government. And you'll move away from admiralty law back to constitutional law. Mm-hmm. And um, this, you made a very interesting point earlier. That's very, very important in this whole journey. Every single soldier in America swears their allegiance to the Constitution and to protect the people. There's no mention of protecting the president. Right. And they don't uh, swear an oath to the president. They swear it 
to the Constitution and the people. That's and right. It was very interesting in the again in the um, optics of the, how many how many military people turned their back on the parade. That was very interesting. Yeah, it was actually a beautiful thing to see. And the other thing I thought was interesting, and I did not watch the inauguration. I'll tell you why. First of all, we were on the wrong side of the Capitol. We were on the east side behind the east side of the Supreme Court, which is behind the Capitol to the east of the Capitol. So we were over there. There'd been a SCOTUS threat or excuse me, a bomb threat at the Supreme Court early in the morning. I woke up at 6 a.m. to sirens and all this hoopla. Um, so we got outside and saw the hoopla. They, they had advanced their perimeter again further into the neighborhood. So they were literally right upon us at that time. And uh, when uh, we decided, well, maybe we'll try and go get a look, see the perimeter was so far out, it would have, we would never have made it to the other side of the Capitol, to the west side, where the stage had been erected to actually see if there was an inauguration. So I did not see an inauguration. So what I was, did see. <laughs> there, there was no inauguration. There was no inauguration. It was all optics. Yeah. And the other thing that's interesting is, is that for those people who study the Constitution, and uh, the correct the correct protocols. They tell me that it's the it's the correct protocol for the president to have his hand on on the Bible at one minute past twelve. But they couldn't even get that right. They got it. They got it on at three to between three and four minutes to twelve, which says that the, the recording that I had at seven o'clock in the morning Central European time was actually put out four or five minutes early by mistake. Huh. <laughs> Apparently, wow. apparently you're gonna steal going to steal it. Yeah, <laughs> pretty sloppy. <laughs> it is pretty sloppy. Somebody least, got fired. <laughs> yeah, these these are all t- telltale signs that wow. um, for people that are aware and awake, they see it. But people who are asleep and um, unaware miss it completely. And these are all little details that you look at and go, that, "That's not right," you know. The other, yeah. thing, of course, when he had his hand on the Bible, the Bible um, was the. It was the Masonic Bible with the upturned cross on there, upside down, right. cross, which is satanic. Um, yeah. Uh, the color of, of the outfits of the ladies of, of, of Big Michael, of uh, Michelle Obama and uh, Kamala in their purple, yeah. right? Yeah. I pledge allegiance to George Soros and the cabal. Exactly. Exactly right. That's exactly what it was. And uh, uh, they, oh, once you're a Jill woman, Biden looked like a pill. Jill Biden, Joe's wife, she looked, her hair looked really good. She had a great hair day. I'll give her credit, but she did not look happy to be there. In fact, the other people that were in attendance close by, they all looked very sour. Yeah, well, you turn up there with a rubber man who's having to go through the process. This is pantomime. And somebody was taking the piss with Hillary Clinton. They they must have chopped her legs off before she arrived. She was about two foot too short. (laughs) Somebody, somebody was taking the piss, I think, when they when they put a, a, they created a clone that was a little bit dumpy. Mm. I mean, it, it was ridiculous, and all these sort of things are very very funny when you know when you know the truth. Um, but for, for some, I've had some people say to me, "Well, she did look a bit short, but you know she's getting old." And I went, "Come on, come on, come on, come on!" Yeah, you don't lose two feet when you're getting old. No, not not like that. Not in a short amount of time either. Um, all right. So let me let me just kind of if it's OK with you, this gentleman yep. I spoke to, he might actually tape a segment with me a little bit later on. She's, he's going to email me something, but he's written two books on the Constitution. Actually, it's one book, two volumes. Each volume is about four or five inches thick. OK, and it's not nine point font, single slime spaced type on parchment paper it's like tracing paper thin so you can only imagine how many thousands of pages these two volumes are uh in these books but so he's really brilliant and um anyway i went through this stuff and at the end of the conversation the only person he said that was worth their salt in the legal team for president trump who do you think it was when you consider all the legal advice he was getting who was probably the person that this gentleman singled out as the one and only that president trump should have listened to well, my first choice would have been General Flynn. For, no, no, legal counsel. Legal, legal counsel? counsel? Mm-hmm. Are you going to tell me Giuliani? No. No. Sidney Powell. Sydney, yeah, totally. Well, yeah. Sid, he, yeah, Sidney yeah. Powell. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and, you know, Sidney Powell, uh, and I, I, I sat in the room interviewing Patrick Byrne several weeks ago on a couple of occasions, and Sidney was there the first time I interviewed with Patrick sitting there and she, you know, they basically kicked her to the curb. Mark Meadows and Cipollone and the whole inside group were just, you know, really 
disrespectful and they went against the president's wishes when he verbally said, I want to make you special counsel to investigate. And this gentleman I talked to was, uh, want, you know, had a couple of questions um, or not questions, but he made some very interesting statements. And he said, you know, the Supreme Court's job was to determine who was really qualified to be the president. And that, you know, they had time before January 20th to make that determination, but they wouldn't hear the case. And he said part of the problem that existed was that, you know, you needed to um, investigate. They needed to search and seize anything that they thought was wrong in these elections. Um, They, you know, obviously they gathered the affidavits, but they never targeted the magistrates. So they needed to do this stuff early on and be prepared for all this. And he said, this all need to be in preparation back in June so that when you found out there was fraud, you already had everything ready to go, which is why there was a big scramble and Patrick Burns spending a lot of money, Mike the Pillow, Mike Lindell, financing a lot of stuff. He seemed he seemed to think that, you know, President Trump had really bad legal advice from the inside, which corresponds with what I heard from Patrick Byrne, Mike Flynn, Jen, uh, Joe Flynn, uh, Ju- uh, Sidney Powell, all of them saying that, that the president was ill served with the legal advice um, and that perhaps maybe that is part of the reason that either that legal advice was intentionally bad. This is a question for you, or it was just one of those things. And he had a backup plan with allowing the fraud to be committed. What do you think? Do you think that was intentionally bad legal advice or, you know, he was just really good at making sure he had a backup plan? I think you have to go back to his interview 20 plus years ago with Charlie Rose when he hit rock bottom on purpose to see who was close to him and who was not. And he was surprised at those that stood by him and he was surprised by those who didn't stand by him. And I think he, he did this. I think it was done on purpose to expose how many corrupt people were in the in the Supreme Court on every level. Um, mm. And it was done on purpose to drain the swamp because they were pretending to be on his side. And the reality was that they were not. So he had to go through this process to expose them. So do you think that uh, Amy Coney Barrett and Kavanaugh and, and others are, you know, not on his side now? Does that seem somewhat evident to you considering they wouldn't even hear the cases, especially uh, the Texas case? There's, there's a lot to that. There's a lot to that. And he's, he put people in places specifically to see if they were trustworthy and genuine. If, and if you go back, back the 20 years ago, he did the same when he was going through a difficult period financially. He put right. people in different places to see if they, were, if they had his back or not. And it was like a test. Um, that was, are you talking about 1991? Correct. I worked for him back then. I actually worked yeah. at one of his properties and I got let go because they couldn't afford the $16,500 a year I was getting paid to answer phones and do paperwork to coordinate sales and leasing contracts. I worked for the GM there. Okay. Um, at, and he used to come in once a week and he was super professional, all female office. Everybody yeah. loved him. The doorman, everybody that worked in the building loved yeah. President Trump, or Donald yeah. Trump back then, Mr. Trump. Um, but unfortunately, you know, the GM had to let me go because she, her budget got cut down. So mm-hmm. I had to go get another J-O-B at the time. But uh, yeah, I find that interesting. Very interesting. No, I think and the, I, the yeah. whole process was to make sure that they drained this one once and for all. This was a reason that was given to me as well as to why Biden wasn't visually arrested at the inauguration. There was, there was a number of things. Number one, if they had arrested him there and then, um, there's not a, not a Supreme Court in America um, that would, uh, would have done anything with it. They would have turned against Trump. Um, so he had to let it go through the process and then let the military deal with it. And you have to understand with Sidney Powell, she's the only legal person qualified uh, to deal with treason in a military tribunal. So she has a huge value. And of course, he's kept that ace card in his pack without making that public. That's a huge ace card that he's got. And he trusts her implicitly and she trusts him implicitly. Do you think she's gone underground because of the $1.3 billion lawsuit from Dominion against her, or is she going underground because the president's going, quotes, underground for a little while? She's she's certainly not worried about the the lawsuit from Dominion because she's got all the evidence against them. So um, bring on the discovery. Yeah, this is this is the best form of defense's attack. And that's what Dominion are doing because they've been caught with their pants down um, and badly so, um, because what people, a lot of people forget is, is that Dominion tried to, uh, to flip the result uh, um, four years ago. And, That's right. Uh, 
um, this is why Hillary Clinton went so mad, because she paid an absolute fortune to guarantee she won. And even flipping 22% of the vote meant she lost. And she, that was what made her angry, because she was told that that would be more than enough. And, mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't, um, because of the secret Trump supporters that, know, that uh, they'd not anticipated. And then she realised that once he got in, she was in big, big trouble. That's why she, they went for impeachment immediately, immediately, and went after him immediately. Um, and I'd say this to anybody that had, had a bit of stick on the 20th from... Uh, certainly, from my, I had some from some of my followers, the the plastic patriots who uh, suddenly started shouting and screaming. Um, if you take Donald Trump's last four years, that's been a thousand times worse than these uh, than than what I got on the twentieth, saying, "Oh, it's time time to, to time to eat humble pie and step down." I said, "The the show's only just started. This is just the start of the journey. This is going to be a so fascinating journey." Where do you think we're going then, Charlie? I mean, President Trump did make some sort of an, a, 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 you know, he stated that uh, I'll be back in some form or another. I won't be gone long. What do you think he means by that? Um, my gut feeling is, is there's, there's two ways it could go here because of the, from what I understand, they're going to impeach Biden this weekend, uh, serve him impeachment papers this weekend. And that's Marjorie Taylor Greene, right? That's correct. That's right. Correct. Um, I did get a, a, I got a schedule through of what they were going to do. Um, it'll either go that way or they might play with him. They might let him run the economy for a couple of weeks, crash the, uh, the, the stock exchange, which would then take all the power away from big pharma and big tech and blame it all on him. Well, he can reverse the executive orders that President Trump did. I mean, he's already starting to do that, but although he, none of them are showing up in the federal registry. He can't. How can he reverse anything? Because he's not the president. He's the president yeah, of a non-existent corporation. Right. This is the conundrum, a non-existent corporation that is defunct, that uh, legally never could have been started because Congress doesn't have the power to subjugate the, the authority of the federal government to a uh, foreign entity. They don't have that power it's to do that. Pantomime. Exactly. But I mean, we've been operating under these auspices now for over 100 years. The whole thing has just been one big joke. Um, so at but, what point but, do we what point now, do we pull the plug on all this and all these people but, with pensions and salaries and SES and all this stuff? Well, these people get fired. The corporation was dissolved when Trump was in England. The U.S. The United States corporation was dissolved. We're in transition between the, the old corporation, which was dissolved which Biden has, has uh, inaugurated himself to chairman of a company that doesn't exist. So that's really, really clever. Um, and then we're in a transition, which we're currently, the US is currently under military rule. Um, it's got, Biden's got no power. So he can sign as many executive orders as he wants. And it was interesting. He signed 17 yesterday. Right. The number. Right. Somebody's, that taking, number... <laughs> somebody's taking the piss, aren't they? They are. They absolutely are. So it, I was speaking to a former military officer yesterday, a couple of them, and one of them is good friends with a chaplain in the Space Force, okay. uh, which at the Space Force has been around as the U.S. secret space program for a while. They just kind of came out of the closet, as you know, under President Trump. Um, and there's been all kinds of evidence of UFOs and all this stuff. I've seen a UFO before. I know lots of people who have. Um, Whatever it is, it is. I, it's definitely something that's unidentifiable and it's, it was flying. But a um, little tic-tac looking kind of a thing, a white yeah. one. Yeah. It looked like a flying cigar with the nose chopped off. It wasn't a yeah. pointy nose, just flat tip. But anyhow, um, he told me, these two different people, one said the Space Force uh, chaplain um, said, don't worry, it's, going to, it's all going to work out. It's, uh, and this guy's known as MAGA supporter. And the gentleman I spoke to just yesterday was talking about, um, you know, I, that the fact that there's martial law in D.C. As soon as you get, you know, active military with guns, you're now effectively running that under martial law. President Trump subjugated, the, you know, d you know, designated the power over to FEMA and uh, Chris Miller. So, um, you know, it's out. It's been out of his hands since before he left office. Hence, the reason we saw the uh, major general from the Na National Guard on Stephanopoulos's program talking about peaceful transference of power to the military. Uh, which was like another little tell. I think it went over Stephanopoulos's head, or maybe it didn't, but he didn't acknowledge it. Um, but what was interesting was that one of the branches that are there uh, um, have had massive tunnel training. Uh, 
Now you only see military presence above ground. And we all know DC is full of tunnels. I've been in some of them going back and forth in the Russell building and you know Congress and what have you. But uh, that tunnel training was under a program called Castle Rock. That's right. Out of Alabama. Interesting. I had to say, hold the phone. <laughs> what did you just say? Exactly. exactly. So I, I thought that was really, really, really interesting yeah. uh, that he said that. So, uh, it, you know, these the funny little cues, clues tie together somehow. Um, I, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see what the big reveal is. Um, and if there is, I mean, if if Biden continues on after he'll get impeached, hopefully tomorrow, Hopefully the articles of impeachment get filed and he will be impeached. Do they have the ability to impeach him? Do we have enough people in Congress and the House that will do it? Because it is a democratically held ha- uh, Congress. Um, I d- I'm going to go through because I let me just have a quick look because the intel I got was was fairly accurate. Um, let me put this on one second. I'll have to put it on for just a second just to get this, this up. I'll put it on to silent, put that down to zero so I can actually get it here. Um, because somebody sent me a schedule of what they thought would uh, the next sort of um, seven days would be, um, and this was this was from a good source. All right, where are we here? The information that's flying around at the moment is crazy. It's really crazy. My phone doesn't stop ringing. No. So. <laughs> and I feel badly because I can't answer everybody, but I'm literally said, I'm just trying to stay in the fact lane right now. So I'm talking to yeah. people that are authorities on subjects to get their opinion. Um, and it was, I thought it was very interesting. He's like, listen, the whole idea of a corporation of America, he goes, that's a, that's a CIA psyop because forget that it, it doesn't even, it can't exist. Congress does not have the authority to do it. So, you know, where the, where we need to go is we need a civil track. They need Sydney and her team running the show. Um, you know, we we punted on the state legislators. They had the real, you know, when presidents are elected by the states, and the states have electors and it's the electoral college from each state that gets together and, and, and confirms the president who won, which guy won or female won. That's and, right. you know, our individual votes get tallied to the state and the state rolls up to the to the presidential election that way. That's how it goes. Um, just because you have more popular votes doesn't mean you won the election. And if the electoral college does not, you know, go your way, it's really what it is. And President Trump won the electoral college uh, game last time and he won it this time, but they were just more devious and stole it. You know, they stole it through the electoral. So the Supreme Court would need to then recognize a civil case, but you have to have your discovery, your forensic evidence and all this stuff. And I told this gentleman I was talking to, I said, hold the phone. I have video footage of people that look like Antifa in the Capitol on January 6th, leaving the Capitol, coming down the stairs from Pelosi's office with stuff underneath their sweatshirts. And the cinematographer, the person, the camera person that was filming this got pushed and the camera went up this way and back down. But, but while that happened, the person pushing the cameraman leaned into the cameraman's ear and said, we're not here to be Antifa today because everybody that was MAGA that was inside the Capitol all over up the stairs and down was screaming at these three guys with yeah, hoodies yeah, on yeah. going, Antifa, get them, stop them, stop them. Yeah. And the guy told the cameraman, we're not here to be Antifa today. Now, why would you do that? Correct. If you're, if you're a bad person, most people just punch in the face and they move on, like get out of yeah. my way. Yeah. This guy was courteous, pushed you know, carefully and said, we're not here to be Antifa today. So to me, yeah. that's a tell that was a white hat operation. Of course. And uh, General McInerney told me we had black hats that were infiltrating our people, obviously dressing up as MAGA. We all saw those videos. And mm-hmm. we had good guys dressing up as bad guys like Antifa so they could go and get all the evidence that, that they need. So that's right. right. They followed so, the Antifa boys in. The, Anti- the Antifa boys were at the front and then right behind them were the white hats that were following them in to, to do a job. And... Uh, Antifa thought that they would hijack the event and land up being hijacked. <laughs> well, so the it, FBI has arrested a few people, Charlie. That's why we had to be extracted on Wednesday on the 20th, because the FBI was going door to door. So ready for how bad big, a big bad FBI is, uh, Big Brother. They mm-hmm. contacted Airbnb and VRBO and were asking those organizations to give them the names of the people that were renting in the vicinity during the inauguration. And the day before the inauguration, they start blowing up 
uh, our phones and emails and all this stuff. And we don't see it because we're out and about. We're not paying attention to that stuff. Uh, we get back and they've already said, well, we tried to reach out to you. We're giving you a full refund because you didn't give us your government issued ID. Meanwhile, they've already gone to other places and, and demanded IDs and all this stuff. They were harassing people. So we left. Sure. We left be sure. because I'm like, I'm not giving you my ID. I don't yeah. know, even want you to know I was here. <laughs> you know sure. I'm here, but you don't know where I am. <laughs> the, the scheduling I got, which, which was uh, starting yesterday, was the new Congress convened for the first time, in theory. Um, mm -hmm. the, the second play role was today was loyal military office, officers publish a list of people wanted for crimes. Minutes later, Congress is taken over by military police and 67% of congressmen are arrested. When's that supposed to happen? Today. And well. Tomorrow, the 23rd, House Representative John Dillamand submits a motion for Biden's impeachment, which quickly goes through due to the fact that mostly Trump supporters are left to vote because all the rest have been arrested. Harris is, has been arrested at this time, so the 25th Amendment is invoked. And then at the end of the week, the 27th, remaining Biden administration members nominate Trump in exchange for presidential pardons. Wow. So we're going to know, basically, well, today we should know if 67% of Congress gets arrested. Yeah, uh, but because it's a military operation, um, the question, the military police, I don't know how the military police work in, in America, but the military police in Europe tend to be a lot more private than the normal police. They don't tend to make announcements. I don't know if they will or won't. The military police, because it's a military operation, tend to keep their cards very close to their chest. And it's even even with the military movements in southern Spain and the UK, they tend to turn their um, uh, their transponders off on their planes. I've, we've had so many planes fly past that are not on flight radar. Uh, but anything that's done military tends to be done very, very discreetly whereas it's not hard to track the police. But the military police, they're, they're harder to track. So I don't know. Would it be public? I would, I would imagine. I don't know. Well, what, here's, what the, here's the thing, right? You go to the Epic Times right now, which I think is a pretty decent publication yep. right now. It says, Pelosi, this is the front page, articles of impeachment to be delivered to Senate on Monday. This is with respect to uh, Trump, right? Yes. This is the, they're still going after him. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Sumer said that House's article of impeachment against Donald Trump will be delivered to the Senate on Monday. And what some constitutional law experts have said is an impossible task. You know, so they're doing the theater right now, which yeah. is similar to what we saw uh, last week where Time Magazine and other left-wing publications were already pro you know, projecting that the uh, Congress and uh, incoming administration wanted uh, you know, investigations. They wanted the FBI to investigate all the members of the National Guard to see who was uh, a radical right-wing uh, person that might be counter, or you know, just not impartial. They were yeah. putting that narrative out there and which may actually fall in place with what you're talking about here. I don't know, but I got to imagine if 67% of, you know, 538 people or 535 people get arrested, that's a lot of people. We're talking several hundred people. We're talking almost 300 people. plus people. You, I can't imagine that would go unnoticed. I don't, just don't know how that would be, held, how you keep a lid on that. You know, I'd Look, expect you, to hear something. You say that, but what we've just seen is we've seen the Dutch government stand down Right. Nothing on European media. You have to go to Denmark to see it in the mainstream media. You don't see it anywhere in Europe. The Italian government has stood down. Angela Merkel has stood down. No mention. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, the Russian government has stood down. The Qatar, uh, the, uh, was it Qatari? No, which one was it? It was, um, it was one of the Middle Eastern countries that the government stood down as well. Um, and also, um, Emirates or Estonia, no, Estonia, Estonia. Estonia's government stood down, mm -hmm. nothing in the mainstream media. So they're, they're covering it up, covering it up, covering it up. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Wow. Um, 
And I'll, I'll be honest with you, it, it doesn't bother me it's not coming out because I know, you and I know the truth. So we know the end game. We just don't know the journey. And the journey is quite fun. It's going all over the place. I never thought it would go half the places we've been already, but it's it's an amazing and amazing journey right now. It, it really has been. And being in D.C. was uh, quite interesting. It was very interesting because the mainstream media was broadcasting Beirut and, and uh, Lebanon in a war zone. Uh, you know, every shot you saw, they were standing in front of Humvees and, and all this nonsense. And it was very chaotic. To me, it was very sublime. I mean, I mean, a military presence notwithstanding, but there was no sense of urgency. I didn't feel afraid at all. About the only bad encounter I had was a deranged homeless man who tried to attack me when I was running one morning with Katie Hopkins and my and producer Liz. Other than that, we had a, 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 ex, a great time, you know, yeah. no, no concerns whatsoever, just that people are so put off with these masks. You know, anybody that was left behind in D.C. trying to live in the area, if you pass them, they had their mask on, they just kind of no eye contact, walk by you. It was really sad. It's been so programmed to be just shut the world yeah. out now yeah. and that's just that's when you're under that kind of uh pressure you know it's just i i'm coming from florida an open state where we don't wear masks right yeah. <laughs> it's you can go to the gym you can work out it's all good you go to nevada where i'm in, in residing at the moment people have to wear masks make reservations it's kind of a hassle but it's still not as bad as dc dc was bad yeah and people it's, yelled at you if you didn't have one on you've moved house since i last spoke to you haven't you yeah, we have a house in Florida, but uh, been in Nevada for a few months. So mm -hmm. we're, I'm just here on my husband's business. So I just I can I can work from wherever. That's the beauty of what I do. I don't need to be in a fancy studio. Exactly. I can just pick up and roll. It's great. It's good, isn't it? It well, it's really good. We're having a good time. Well, it's always we're great good. to see you, Anne. And, oh, uh, Charlie, it's wonderful to see you. Yeah. Um, I, I will keep you apprised. I'm going to have another conversation with this gentleman. He may be somebody you want to talk to because I think cool. he's brilliant. Sure. He's absolutely brilliant. General Flynn has, uh, you know, taking some time off. I did reach out about yeah. that and he's just laying low for a little while. I think, sure. I think he just, I think he needs to decompress, right? That poor I man has that. been through a lot. Uh, Joe has been very outspoken. Joe yeah. Flynn. Do you know Joe? No, I don't, but we could, I could talk to him. I'll, but also I'll, I'll, uh, and I'll send you a text message and introduce you to, I think uh, you should have Joe on. He was on a caravan to midnight the other night. And he was not holding back. Okay. So and I think maybe, it'd be a good. Well, you, because, because of all your connections, there's a bloke that's not doing a lot right now. It's, it's Trump. Maybe he's free. <laughs> maybe you could get him on. <laughs> yeah, just I, thought. Hello, Donald. Would you like to join us for a little round table right now? So. Exactly. A little bit of light entertainment. After four light years of pain in the butt, you can have oh a bit God. of light entertainment. Uh, hell, hellfire and, and uh, slings and arrows, that poor man. He, and he just took it with such grace. See, and Melania, what an unbelievable people. You know, the whole incredible, family. They, incredible man, incredible family. Yeah, really, really, really good. So I wish them all the best. I hope they get some rest. And if we see him back sooner than later, I know there's uh, hundreds of, well, billions of people around the world that are cheering for America right now. 100%. You know, they don't want to see the light extinguished here. Yeah, so, there's, there's a lot of people who want us to continue this fight. Because the last thing they want is to, to go back to the place that we were in before. And, Charlie, uh, do, do you have advice for people that are feeling very despondent? Because I can tell you Monday or Friday night. Now, what is today? Today's Friday. Uh, Wednesday night. I did a live show and I did call-ins and just, just let people talk, you know, just let them vent. And there's a lot of people that are really sideways right now uh, and they don't understand what's happening. So what advice would you give them? The best advice I can give you is, is that, that what I've seen is the people that have been the most distressed were, have not connected with their true inner self. And you need to go back inside yourself. And I've said it many times. If you believe in God, you talk to God. If you believe in Allah, talk to Allah. If you don't believe in either, talk to your mother or grandmother, but get your moral compass right. And when your moral compass is right, you'll understand what's right and what's wrong. And what happened from a visual point of view was wrong. You don't need to be clever to work it out. But there's also, you get you get a lovely feeling of warmth, the, the number of mistakes, and I've pointed them out this evening, that will make you smile. This has all been done as optics. This has all been done as pantomime. The battle is already won. 
You don't need to panic. You don't need to worry. This is all about waking people up so that they can see what's going on. But when you understand what's right and what's wrong, you'll understand it. You can look at it very clearly and see what's right and what's wrong. And you can make your own judgment. And what, when you see that, when you see the end of the tunnel, just focus on the, the end of the tunnel. Don't focus on the walls that are covered in shit. Right. That's right. Well, that's pretty much the rule of life, isn't it? And the judge. It's just we've got to keep going. Well, I will keep you updated uh, as to what uh, Dr. Vieira says. I think um, you know he's made some things very clear. He's pointed out from a strategic side errors that uh, were made, or were they? Were they errors, or were they part of the the overall strategy to allow this to continue to unfold, to allow the crime to be committed? Um, and, and you know, was that part of the plan? My he's, gut feeling is it was because I've been told so many times, trust the plan, trust the plan. But it won't be it won't be anywhere like the, uh, the the route that you think. That's what I was told many many times, and they're absolutely right, right on that one. Well, fingers crossed from your lips to God's ears, Charlie. Exactly. Thank you very much, Anne. Always a pleasure. Great to see you. Thank love, you for reaching love out. Love to Liz too. You got it. And love to your family and to Tara. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Thank you.